Hi there. This is Marcy and David Lynn aboard the sailboat Nine of Cups. We have officially started our van conversion on blue, our long wheelbase, medium roof Ford Transit 250. The first project was to install a roof fan and vent. We chose the Max Fan, model 6200K, which has a smoke-colored lid. In this video, David will show you how he installed the fan. Watching David as he fearlessly made the first cut into the roof of our beautiful new van was definitely unnerving. First, let's take a look at the supplies I used. To make a good seal under the fan, I used a butyl seal tape. I ordered a 30-foot roll of 1 8 inch thick, 3 quarter inch wide tape. This stuff is great. It's like a long, flat strip of putty that can be formed into any shape. To seal around the edges and keep the screws from leaking, I used a lap sealant. I ordered the black, self-leveling version. There's an indentation on the roof that has to be filled in. I wandered around my local Home Depot until I found something that would work. It's a rubber cove base, 4 inches high by 1 8 inch thick. I bought 1 48 inch length, which was plenty for the project. To provide some additional support to the thin sheet metal under the fan, I used two pieces of 3 quarter inch plywood, cut to 2 inches by 14 inches. This is likely to get damp, so I used a marine grade, but an exterior grade would also work. I sealed the wood with two coats of epoxy, but any wood sealer will do. I used six stainless steel pan head bolts, sized 1024 by 2 inches long, with flat washers, lock washers, and nuts. These were too long and I had to cut them off. Uh, inch and a half bolts would have been better. I use thread locker on all the bolts to make doubly sure that the nuts don't vibrate loose. To prevent rust, I use an automotive metal primer to paint all the cut edges and the drilled holes. I needed a scaffolding system to work on the top. I used two six-foot ladders with a plank between them. A six-foot ladder just fits inside our medium roof van as long as it's positioned between the roof bows. The fan requires a 14 inch by 14 inch cutout in the roof. That size opening just fits between the aftmost roof bows of a Ford Transit, about 20 inches or so in from the rear of the van. The first step was to drill pilot holes from underneath to mark the corners of the cutout. Then I marked the outline on the top. I masked around it to protect the paint along the outside of the cut as the jigsaw cuts the hole. I wasn't sure whether the metal filings that were expelled by the saw would damage the paint. So to be on the safe side, I placed cardboard on the nearby roof surfaces. I also put a piece of plywood down to spread the load from my elbows as I leaned in the top, hopefully to prevent me from denting the roof. In retrospect, my protective measures may have been overkill, but I didn't damage the roof or the paint. I also taped a trash bag to the underside of the area to be cut to collect any metal filings as I made the cuts from above. The next step was to drill a hole big enough to insert the jigsaw blade into. I used the jigsaw with the metal blade to cut out the rectangular hole. This part went much faster than I expected. The jigsaw had no trouble cutting through the steel roof. Applying the 10 foot rule, the cutout doesn't look all that bad. I used metal primer to coat the edges to prevent rust from forming. Mounting the fan on the transit ran into two minor complications. One is from the Transit Upfitters Guide, which is a 288-page publication with a host of information on modifying a Ford Transit. 
The upfitter's guide states that nothing weighing more than 2.2 pounds should be mounted on the unsupported roof. Gear weighing up to 55 pounds can be mounted as long as the load is distributed along roof rails between the bows. Since the fan weighs more than 2.2 pounds, I interpreted this to mean that I needed to add some additional supports between the roof bows. I used marine plywood to make the supports. The second complication is that there are indentations on the roof, right under the mounting flanges of the fan. I wanted to build these indentations up so that the flange would have a flush surface to mate with. After wandering around a Home Depot looking for a suitable material, I found what I needed in the flooring department. A strip of rubber cove base cut to match the flange works quite well. By adding two strips of the 1 8 inch butyl seal tape, one under the cove base and one over the cove base, the gap created by the indentation was filled and sealed. So I ask you, what kind of idiot makes a video but forgets to turn the camera on? At this stage of the project, things were moving along nicely and I was totally engrossed in it, so much so that I forgot to run the video camera. I'll do my best to describe how the next steps went. First remove the trash bag that was taped under the cutout. Then use a small amount of butyl seal tape to position and hold the cove base spacer temporarily in place. Place the fan assembly in the cutout. It fit quite nicely by the way. Use the assembly as a drill guide to drill the holes through the roof. The holes in the sides were drilled large enough for the machine screws while the holes in the ends were drilled just large enough for the sheet metal screws that came with the fan. Then remove the fan assembly and cove base, deburr the holes and prime them. After the primer dries, apply new sealant to the bottom of the cove base and put it into position. Add sealant to the entire circumference of the fan assembly and place it into the opening. Screw the fan's front and rear flanges to the roof using the stainless steel sheet metal screws that were provided with the fan. These screws will actually go through the roof and the ears of the roof bows. Secure the fan's side flanges using the 1024 machine screws. These screws go through the roof and the plywood support pieces and are secured using a flat washer, a lock washer, and a nut. I also use Loctite thread locker to make doubly sure the nuts won't vibrate loose. As all the screws are tightened down, the excess butyl sealant will squeeze out. It's easily cleaned up using a plastic putty knife. The two inch machine screws were too long, so I cut them off using a grinder and a metal cutting wheel. The Max Fan installation manual recommends adding additional sealant over the screws and around the edges of the flanges. I used a self-leveling black lap sealant. This turned out to be a lot messier than I'm used to when sealing the hatches and ports on a boat, but I'm confident it won't leak. I still have to route the wiring and make the connections. I'll cover this in a later blog. Thanks for watching. To view more of our travel and how-to videos, visit our blog and website at www.justalittlefurther.com.